morning everyone good to see you again today um i thought it's about time that i did another mech review and i've been looking at this one for quite some time and it is the um h stone bane and this is a clone um and it's a beauty um i've had it for um a couple of days just trying it out seeing what it's all about and i thought i'd talk to you about it i'll show you what's um what's going on with it um this is the clone this is a fast tech clone um and um here's the packaging i won't show you this in the close-ups because there's no point but you've got a picture of the copper picture of the brass don't really know why they do that but hey um it kindly tells you that you need to have a hybrid friendly atomizer on both sides which i think is quite good nice for a, a clone and then inside there's nothing just a sleeve so <clears throat> that's it so i've got this with the kennedy on top um and it's obviously got some sort of clear coat on it you can see like um most of the clones have before you strip them back and i haven't stripped this one back yet because i thought you know what i'd keep it like this and see how the coat goes for the time being but um, let's have a vape then let's go down, let's have a bit of a chat about it, and I'll take it apart, show you what's what, and um, then give some thoughts. Cool, cool, okay. Okay, so hopefully we're not going to wobble too much, hopefully we're going to be able to have some focus here. But here it is, and it's a beast, it is massive. Um, if you put it alongside something else, I mean I've got a really short setup here. So this is the Raven. Look at the difference between those two things. They've both got atomizers on and the Raven with the Goon Low Pro on is the same length as the mod, as the Bane. But hey, here you go. Right. So it is a two-part mod. <clears throat> Slightly different to lots of other mods that are out there on the market. Um, you have... We'll go from top to bottom. So you have recessed 510 uh like catch cup so that'll fit your 24 millimeter mods um and then what happens is you unscrew it so i put a little bit of contact cleaner a bit of three and one oil on here and you take it in apart and you've got two sections so that's how you adjust for your battery rattle so you screw your two sections together like so easy right okay um, that is really solid. That is massively chunky. It's, you know, that is such a weighty piece of metal. Um, it's in brass, <clears throat> this one. Threads are nice. You've got like seven threads. So it's going to stay together nicely and you're going to get good conductivity. And then on the bottom you've got your um, switch, <clears throat> which is a magnet. You can see on this, how are we going to focus there? It says, whilst I'm waiting for this to focus, H Stone Mods made in Italy, Bane LE3051. So, if you, as I said before, if you have a limited edition 3051, then you definitely do have a clone. Um, so, it's a magnetic switch with a very long throw. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll take this apart. It just screws in. It's got a um, a really really sort of it's not particularly tight in terms of how it oh shit how it screws together. <clears throat> but you've got your sort of your AV style magnets on that. Oh shit, there we go. So obviously you want to keep them apart so they're not going to smash each other. And then you've got loads and loads of venting. And look at the throw. So look at the depth of that. So you're going to be able to push your, um, I don't know what I'm talking about, but you've got a massive firing pin there. Look, massive copper firing pin. Um, and you can screw that in with a flathead screwdriver, which is quite nice, which is useful. Um, all copper switch. And that has those divots in the side so that um, it lines up with your venting. So you can make sure that you've got your gases can get out but look how deep that goes in so 
that's literally all there is to it. There's a bit of Delrin in the bottom there um, to insulate the switch. Um, but yeah, it all sort of fits together quite nicely. Oh, shit. Um, little gripe, the magnet doesn't actually fit into the um, into the switch. It just sort of rests on the top like that. So you can't just push, you can't actually push it in. Um, but it doesn't really affect the performance too much. <clears throat> Obviously, when you put it together, you need to make sure that your magnets are opposing, like so. There we go. So what we do, pop that down there. Mm. It's a bit of a pain sometimes, this one. Pop. In fact, it's actually easier to pop your firing pin in first. <clears throat> I've got a bit of a cold at the moment. Apologies, guys. <coughs> Did this first time last time, and now I can't seem to get the switch. Ugh. So that's that's not ideal. Right. There. Just need sort of nosing in using a screwdriver. <clears throat> no drama. And then we have our magnet. So we put our magnet in there. Pop our other magnets. So put your finger in there. Make sure they're opposing. See your magnet in like that. It sort of wobbles about a little bit, but no drama. And then that's that's the gripe I have. So you just sort of got that magnet just sitting on there. Um, so when you put them together, they can potentially just resist. And they can flip around, but the threads catch nice and easily. There we go. Easy, easy. You can just screw it up as tight as you want it. Um, and then you can see in the bottom, you've got your massive firing pin. goes all the way in. It actually screws a long way. If you want it to, you can screw it quite tight. So it's a bit recessed. So if you're putting it on your desk, you're not going to have a problem. <clears throat> Um, in terms of battery position, we've got um, 25 hours in here. I've been putting it um, facing down, so positive down into there, because you've got all the venting down the bottom. Um, I'm sure you'd be absolutely fine with it both ways, but that works for me. And then I like to just tighten it up a little bit, because obviously all of the parts depend on your battery rattle. And screw your atomizer on and then tighten up the mod. No real gap there to speak of. And then we're golden. There you go. So it's quite a simple device. It's quite a simple mod. <coughs> um, the engraving is okay on there. It's not really engraving, I suppose. It's more sort of like a an etch but um but yeah it's uh, it goes together really nicely but it is a chunky chunky device i mean look at that my hands aren't particularly small but that is that fits my entire hand so you could do some damage with that <laughs> but yeah let's go back up and have a chat so just juice those coils up again this is like a point point one point one two maybe um using some flatten flat wire which is by the way really my favorite wire um, just so easy to use brilliant to build with so easy so predictable <clears throat> you always get a really low resistance when you first build it and you pulse the coils and then they go back up so i get 0 0.05 to start with pulse it for a little bit and goes up to like a 0.15 <coughs> so the heating really helps yeah so look we've got our recessed switch now so you can pull that out a little bit if you just want it on a bit of a longer throw but i think it's 
it's better just keeping it in. Um, and I like to hold it just by the bottom because it's got these sort of nice contours, but I suppose you could hold it there. Um, it's a bit of a weird sort of shape in some ways, but it hits beautifully. It's um, <coughs> it is really nice and predictable. There's no um, no messing around. You can clean your contact nice and easily. Got a hybrid, fixed hybrid. I'm not sure if I mentioned. So it's just there's no disc to remove. It's just a fixed hybrid on the top. Um, let me just plug that on. Go to town. The clone is not. It's not expensive. This is about what was it? I think it's about twenty dollars. So it's not an expensive clone, but for the amount of metal that you get for that, it's quite impressive. So um, so yeah, that's the H Stone mods bane in brass with a copper switch, copper contacts. Um, they call it a competition mod. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, but uh, I think if I was using this as a daily carrying mod, I think I'd have to be wearing jeans. I wouldn't want to take it to work in a suit because that is just a weighty, weighty, weighty guy. It's just going to drag your suit down. Just some comparisons with some other mods, just in terms of size. So look, I mean that is your underdog version two, and that's a chunky mod. But in terms of the comparison side by side with those two, you know, it's still massive. Um, what's everyone else going to have had as a frame of reference? I mean, like an able, for example, alongside an able, and that's a relatively tall dripper on top of that able. You know, I mean, I know that the Kennedy is big, but you know, that's that's huge. Anyway, it's been fun. I'll um talk to you again soon. I need to do a vlog again at some point. Um, so I'll do a vlog. It's been much more around Max again recently. Um, I don't I don't tend to use regulators at all, so um, that's what I'll be talking about. But yeah, thanks very much for your time. Hope you enjoy. Please like, please subscribe as per usual. I really appreciate it. And we're getting close to 700 100 subs now. So um, obviously some people are liking it. Or you're just forgetting to unsubscribe. But uh, hey, um, I don't mind. As long as uh, you're getting something interesting out of this, then great. But cool. Thank you very much indeed. And I will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.